Hello, this is Elaine once again from Antelope Beads trying to work out my technical issues. Uh, hopefully um, I am in the Antelope Beads market. Somebody please let me know if I'm not. Thank you and welcome to the new members from the Antelope Beads market. Thank you so much. I think you're really going to enjoy the post to this Facebook page. And today we're going to talk about several different things. Uh, first of all, we're going to show you how to do the Spanish knot. Really cute, simple, decorative knot. Lots of applications. And then we're going to go through a couple different design ideas and talk about some of the technical issues um, having to do with those. And okay, Jennifer. Hello, Jennifer. I think I'm in the right place now. Thank you so much for your patience. And lastly, we talked about the 2 millimeter components last week and had some technical problems with a couple of the clasps. I've got a good fix for that and so we'll go through that at the end. All right, okay, so let's get started. Okay, so I am going to use the Naughty Do-It-All board as my primary tool for this project and love this board. It's heavy enough so that when you do knotting on it, it kind of stays put. You can pull on things and it stays put. It has all these different holes. You can measure things on it. It's got little things to hold your beads. And so it's really, really a nice little tool. Um, okay, so but what I am going to do is just slide this board over here so that you can see my peg maybe a little bit better here. Um, and so I've got a peg, one of the pegs that this board comes with has a little alligator clip on it. Love this thing. So let's just start by just showing you the basic knot. So I've just got a little piece of, I think this is one millimeter leather, doesn't really matter. You can do this knot with any size leather. And I'm just going to clip it right in here. And I've got two equal pieces on each side. So. Um, I'm going to put one side under the other side, okay? So, and I'm working, I think, from right to left. If you're left-handed, you can reverse the direction, no problem with that. So I've got this side underneath this, the other side, and then I'm going to take the same tail, and I'm going to bring it across the loop that I formed right here. So right now what I've got is a pretzel, and I really need to pinch this little pretzel right at the juncture here. It's just gonna really help you manage this whole thing. So, okay, and then I'm gonna pick up the second tail, and this is kinda not intuitive, but I'm gonna bring the second tail up, over, and then through the loop on the bottom part of the pretzel. And I will then just pull this, it's a big mess, and I've got my first knot here. Let's bring that up a little closer so you can see that let me get a couple more in here and you can see the design a little bit better so again I bring and I'm always working from the same side so if I start on the right I'm going to continue on the right so I put the right side under the left over both strands make my pretzel bring the other tail up and under and then through the loop at the bottom of the pretzel and pull it tight. Okay, one more time and then I'll show you what this looks like. Okay, so we go under, over, hold, and then over and under is kind of the way you can keep talking to yourself through that. So there we go. So we've got three knots right here and it just makes a really nice pattern. Um, and you can do a whole bracelet like this. I will mention um, that, you know, it's, it's pretty, pretty secure, um, but you know, you can really kind of stretch it out a little bit. So if I want to make sure that it's not going to stretch, I'm going to use sort of a carrier strand in the middle. And that's going to do two things. One is it's going to keep this from stretching. And secondly, and more importantly, I can add beads to my design. So let me set this aside. And I am going to start 
with some big hole. These are eight millimeter lapis beads. And lapis has this really nice pyrite uh, matrix running through it. So it's a little bit of a dark gold. So an antique brass uh, looks really, really good with this. So um, to start this piece, I've strung my beads on this piece of, I think it's two millimeter leather, and I have no problem getting the big hole beads on the two millimeter leather. I've got a knot in both ends, okay? And then I've got a pretty long piece of one millimeter, and I'm talking about close to five feet. Of, and this is a one millimeter, uh, it's the antique brass leather, and it's got a slightly greenish tone to it, which I really like with the lapis. So I'm gonna fold it in half here. Got to fold right in, in here. So what I'll do now is I'm going to clip the middle strand with the beads on it into the loop. And then I'm going to also, now I can't clip this right in here, but sometimes I find it easier to just put this over the clip and underneath the knot here. So that's gonna kinda of just hold it together. So let's get started with a couple of knots here. So I go under, over, and of course now I'm working with a longer piece of leather. I, and then I go over, and I notice I'm just trying to ignore that center strand. So then I come over, under, and that will include the center strand and through tie that first knot it likes to come off the clip there we go okay let me do another one here so under and everything including the center strand over there's my pretzel and then over under and through and the easiest way to do this is just to push the loop up and then pull the tail through okay all right now I'm going to add a bead here and there we go so I'm just going to continue the same pattern but now I'm going to just tie that bead into it so I come under over okay over under and through Okay, there we go. Hang on just a sec. Sometimes it's a little tricky. Now, here's what I want to have happen here. I want to make sure that this strand just goes around the round bead and it's gonna sit there really pretty nicely once I have it adjusted correctly. It's just sitting right on the edge of the bead there. And I can tie a couple more knots or I can just make it really simple and then just add another bead right off the bat. Under, over. It's, it's, it's that, you kind of feel like you need to flip to the other strand right away, but just have to wait. Under, over, over, under, and through. Okay, there's another one. Come on there. Just take a second, get that guy adjusted. Okay, so that's making a really pretty, simple, basic pattern, really highlights the, the beads. There we go, how's the lighting there? It's a little bit better. By the way, I think I finally got a fix on lighting, which you will see the next time we do this. So there's that bracelet, really simple. Now to finish this, you know, I, I've actually, interest, interestingly enough, I have a loop right here where I started. So, you know, I can maybe, even make that loop a little bigger and finish it with a button. So that's one option. The other option that I've been using probably the most commonly is the um, magnetic clasp. And so for this project, I would want to use maybe, this is I think a five millimeter magnetic clasp. Um, and um, Shirley, I, hello Shirley, we are going to, uh, I, I, will ad, ad, I will address that right at the end, if that's okay with you. Gotcha. Okay, and hello Sandy, how are you? Okay, so I've got this. So what I would do now is cut, cut the leather off 
and using either a pair of scissors or or some uh, flush cutters. And I, again, I'm leaving about a quarter of an inch. And then I'm going to put some glue in the clasp. And I'm going to put some glue on each one of these ends. And then what I'll do, sometimes the ends like to stick out to the side. So I just start like this. I sort of tilt it to the side. And then I just nudge that last end into the clasp. And I want you to go in there, even though we don't have any glue in here, just to really show you. And for this particular one, I would use the uh, super tight glue in the black bottle. So that would look like, look, make, this is what it would look like when it's finished. So that's, that's a nice finish for that one. Okay, so in this particular case, we used big hole beads. Um, I did a sample with, um, with the uh, big hole, um, big hole wooden beads, and then also some um, gemstone beads, and you know could do all kinds of things with that. I will show you that you know some design ideas with that at the end. So big hole beads, we can use the bigger leather core. One of the advantages to that, and you can't really see it here, is it makes a rounder braid. It looks really round. The braid looks really round so okay but that but then we might not have big hole beads so the other option is to use a carrier uh, cord and that's the cord that we put the beads on so the center cord and um, okay um, I am going to uh, Leanne I will talk to you also at the end about that and I think Kelly will have some information for you as well. Okay, so in this particular case, I'm using a piece of waxed cord, and I have got some wood beads here with the smaller holes or little cube beads, and then I thought it would be fun to add in some of the tear cast rock and roll beads in the metal. Um, I, I think I like, you know, maybe just a mix of metals on those. So to get this started, I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot in the end of the cord and that's actually going to help us with the finishing process too. I'm going to put the cord in my clip and I'm going to just start by tying some knots um, and I, I did not string the beads on this cord yet. You can string them all at once or just one at a time. So here is the um, here is the a piece of one millimeter dark brown cord. Again I'm going to find the center and I'm going to just hook it right over that this clip whoopsie there there we go that's a little better okay and I'm just going to start by tying a couple of knots around the cord so I'm going to come under over okay and then over under and again I'm just going to push that second strand through and then pull it through there we go once I get my first one set things go a little bit smoother okay I'm just gonna adjust this a little bit hang on let's see if that no that's not working any better okay all right I'm using a dark cord here which is probably not not helping okay I'm gonna go ahead and tie one more knot under over over under through okay and there okay now I can add a wood bead with a small hole onto this center cord. There we go, like that. Okay. And again, I'm going to do the same thing under, over, and then over, under, through. Okay. And I'm going to get that bead up there. Some of the leathers are a little stiffer than others. Come on there. And, you know, I can, I can do all kinds of things. I can bury the size of the, I can bury the, the number of knots I put between the beads. I can put one, I can put three, I can mix it up a little bit. And then maybe I want to add one of these copper beads. Um, and so, there we go. All right, under, over, okay, like that and then over, under, through, and then I can continue this. Now, when I finish this one, 
I'm going to essentially do the same thing. Okay, I'm going to make the world's shortest bracelet here. I'm going to, but I am going to go ahead and just tie a knot and maybe even a couple of knots in the end of this wax cord here and slide it down to the base of the knot. And one, one of the reasons why I'm doing that is I don't want that cord to slip out either now or after the gluing process. So I've got this big, it doesn't have to be pretty. So again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to, and I can snip this and, and melt this a little bit, but just snip them all to about a quarter of an inch and put them in the magnetic clasp and glue them in again with the, I like to use the glue with the, um, with the, uh, in the black tube. It's a gel glue. It's a little thicker, a little bit easier to use. So that that's the basic idea. I also finished, and hold on for one second, I also finished, um, oh my goodness, here we go. Okay. I finished um, this bracelet actually using a round clasp and I only had a two millimeter class, so all I managed to get in there was a the one strand of two millimeter cord I used for the core, um, and then I just made sure those knots are secure. If I had had a three millimeter round class, that would have worked perfectly. So for this particular design, what I did was do a bunch of knotting. I added a tiara cast bead. I added, you know, then a wood bead, and here I added a a wood bead and these come on a strand and then I actually for the strand going around the beads I actually added some extra beads so that's cool. Becky the glue is super tight glue um, antelope beads carries it there's essentially two different types of glue uh, one comes in a red tube it's a little bit um, thinner um, works really well for just basic gluing, you know, flat leather or a single strand into a clasp. When I'm gluing multiple strands, I really like the second glue. It comes in a black tube, and it's a it's a more of a gel glue, and so so super tight glue. We love this stuff. Really works well, and we don't have any problems with things coming out. So so all kinds of different design ideas. This this bracelet here, I just use the the um, gemstone, this is Venus Jasper cube beads. The Venus Jasper has a really nice blue-gray matrix, so I actually decided to use some gray leather. And this one, you know, I use the, um, I, the these are small hole amazonite beads, put a couple of little rings on either side of the beads, and I just kind of vary the number of knots in between them. And this one I just finished with a flat clasp. So uh, just a couple more things to show you here. One is that you can actually add beads to the outside strands as well as the inside strands. So on this particular one, I didn't have a carrier strand. I was just using uh, the two strands of leather like I showed you right at the beginning, just like this. And I did some knotting and then I put a wood bead on one side and then did some more knotting, put a wood bead on the opposite side. So it kind of goes back and forth like that. And you can also put two beads on. I might just do that real quick to show you because, I mean, and not that you'd necessarily want to do this, but let me just get one knot going here. Over, under, under, over, through. Okay. I can actually, if I want, put a bead on both sides, both sides of the strand. And I just want to just show you what that would look like just for fun here. And especially if you had littler beads and you use maybe three smaller beads, that could look at, have it do a, be a really cool look. So here's what that would look like. Under, over, over, under, through. Come on there, baby. Okay. And just get that guy snugged up there. Takes a couple little bit to get it to get it situated correctly, but there we have a you know couple of beads right there. 
couple, and then one other thing you can do that is super interesting is you can use two different colors of leather. For this particular one, I used a purple and a light blue, and I just started by clipping the two strands right into my clasp, and it's always going to be, the purple's always going to be on one side, and the blue is always going to be on another side. So that's another fun thing to do, little variation there. All right, so that kind of wraps it up for the Spanish knot. Hopefully that gives you some ideas as to some different projects that you, um, that you uh, can, can do with this knot. Um, and any questions about this knot? Okay, well, thank you for taking a look at this video. And now, thanks for joining Antelope Beads. I'm just going to switch gears for one second and talk about this class that we had an issue with last week. We were doing a project with the two millimeter uh, components, and there's these really cool flat clasps that work well with the two millimeter leather. You know, to start with, I can just actually tie the tie the um, start the cord and just tie it right into the end of the clasp. But then when we got to this side of the clasp, we had some problems. So the fix is to use a two a four millimeter jump ring and then two to three links of relatively fine chain and then this clasp just goes through with absolutely no problem and the other thing I liked about this is that the knot just kind of sits here on the outside of the clasp so so that's an easy fix works really well so um, you know any chain that's probably right around three to four millimeters is going to work really well with this just two to three links and I did the same thing with this class which I indicated was going to be a really nice component for men and again if I just use a little four millimeter jump ring and three links of chain I can it'll just go right through the clasp there we go so that's how that would sit so okay that's it thank you so much okay so um uh let's see uh, Shirley had some questions about gemstones and crystals that can be used in resin geodes. Am I assuming that you are talking about like a resin bezel that you put some resin in and then implant things in it? Is that right? Is that right, Shirley? Okay. Shirley, I don't know if you're online or not. Um, we do carry quite a few gemstone beads, not so many crystals, but a lot of the beads just really work nicely embedded in resin as well. Hopefully that answers your question. And um, Leanne, we are going to, um, I, Leanne, I got to tell you, I have been selling jewelry using these magnetic clasps for years and years with like minimal problems. Um, I, um, let me see what else you were saying, Shirley. Um, um, oh, okay. The button option. Um, I will, Leanne, next time I do a macrame bracelet, I will make sure to show you the button option. Let me just see if I can demo this without a button here. Um, so I've got my little cord here at the end. And so what I like to do when I do a uh, button type of closure is I start with my loop. Here we go. So here's my loop. Okay. Okay. There we go. Loop, 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 loop. So there's a loop and the, I make sure my loop is big enough for a button. And then I, you know, whatever I'm doing, I knot, knot, knot the woven bracelets with the beads in between them, you know, so we go down and we have all our beads on the bracelet. Then we're ready to finish it. Here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie another overhand knot. Okay. Okay. But I'm not going to tighten it. I am going to put the button on one of the ends 
and I don't have any, oh, here we go. Let's pretend this is a button. Okay, whether it's two holes or a shank or whatever, here's that. I put that end back through the knot here before I tighten it. Come on, come on. Try to get everyone tightened at the same time. Okay, and I can, you know, adjust that. So now what I've got is this. Okay, so my button is attached here, and I will cut these off and glue them, and then I can put my button.